Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to review how to make a type curve within Dynomics. So in our previous videos, we have uh, loaded our production and well header databases, and we've created a new project. If you don't know how to get to this point, I would encourage you to go back and review those short videos. So to start off, we're going to hide away some of our database and uh, file menus here, just so we have more room to work with. And you'll notice that we have a number of tabs here. The tab that we're going to focus on is called the Type Curve tab. So this is, well, this is where we will uh, start to build out a type well curve that we can then apply to, uh, to wells to guide the declines. So to do this, we start off by clicking New. And we can give this a name. In this case, I'm going to do a decline for the Turner formation. So I'm going to call this my Turner type curve. OK, and now we need to set some options for this type curve. So first of all, we can decide what fluid we want to decline. Um, we can decide what well sets we want to use. And then we have some options for setting up the chart and how we want to uh, normalize and aggregate the data. So to get started, we'll need to choose a well set. So to do this, we come down here to the data options and we click the plus sign. This pulls up a menu here and I'm going to create a well set called Turner. And now what we can do is we can select the wells that are relevant to our analysis. The easiest way to do this is to add a series of filters. So if I click on add filter, the first filter I'll choose is the formation. So I want to filter down to the Turner formation. So I just select this and I click add. I also only want to look at wells that are uh, that have been drilled in the last few years. So I can come here and I can say spud date and I can say uh, spud date greater than or equal to. This will be la you know, after. Um, and so let's say I only want to look at wells that have been drilled since 2013. So I can say 2013-01 uh, and we can hit add there and let's say I only want to look at wells that have at least a year of production history once again I can add another filter for this once again I'll say spud date and now I will say less than or equal to and uh, let's say uh, 2021-01-01 and add Okay, so now we've we filtered by formation uh, and we've put a, a range of the date of wells that we want to look at. The last thing here that I'll look at is, let's say I only want to look at, at wells that have at least some minimum of oil and gas production. So I can say cum oil and I'm going to say greater than or equal to, and let's put a small number in here like a thousand barrels. And now we can add that. We could also add filters for things like operator, uh, county, etc. There's a number of criteria that you can filter by here, but these are the ones that I'm going to leave it at. And then what we can do is we can click on a well and we can move it over to our well list. We can also select multiple wells here by holding down the shift button and then we can send them all over. Okay, so now we've selected our wells. I'm going to hit OK. And now we see that we have 220 wells that we'll be building our type curve with. And we're starting off by looking at our type curve for oil. So I'm going to turn our gas curve off for the minute. And uh, we, can, we can do that here. And we can see what, we're, what it is that we're looking at here for our type curve. And uh, we, can, we can do a few things, like we can drag and drop the start date. Um, one thing that you'll probably need to do is you'll probably need to to put a, a QF on here. Um, this just gets some of our other drag and drop parameters uh, visible on the screen. And then you can move this around and you can see that the B factor and the DI are changing as we, as we move through here. And if you want to look at this on log scale, we can of course, uh, We can, of course, look at it that way as well. Okay, so 
you'll notice I'm not getting a, a good fit here. So one of the things I might want to do is I might want to look and say, huh, what's happening to my well count? And what this suggests is that, you know, I need to uh, change uh, how I'm aggregating the data here. So I like to look at it as an average of well performance through time. And uh, I think that's probably one of the, the better methods here. And now you'll notice we get a much better uh, fit on our decline here. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, we now have our type curve for oil. Let's say we want to add the type curve for gas here. Well, let's first of all, let's display our gas here. And then you'll also notice that we need to add a fluid. So we're going to say add fluid. We're going to add gas. And now we are ready to start our type curve here. So once again, we can we can drag and drop. And uh, we need to set that, that QF here. And then we can come in and do this. And I, I'm going to offset my fluids here. We can click this stagger fluids button. And we can alternate between... Uh, a log and uh, and linear scale here. It's really up to you how how you want to view that. And so there we go. Now we have defined our type curves for this for the Turner formation for this project. Okay, let's create a second type curve. So once again, we'll say new. In this case, I'm going to create one for the uh, Niobrara formation. Okay, and to get started, once again, we'll need to select our well set. So I'm going to create a new one here. I'm going to call this well set Niobrara. Add a filter. And for formation, I'll come here and I'll select Niobrara. And let's say once again, I might want to set some additional filters such as, you know, some, some minimum of QM oil and perhaps a, uh, a spud date range. And in this case, we're going to select wells that were drilled before um, January 1st of 2021. And we'll hit Add. And now it filters us down to our well list. And we'll grab these curves, move them over, and hit OK. So now we have our Niobrara. Once again, I'm going to put this in a log scale and I'm going to use this averaging for our normalization method. So what we can do is we can grab these points on our graph and we can uh, we can come through and we, we can look at our our aggregation in a number of different ways. Um, I'm going to leave it at average so it's uh, so it's consistent with what we were doing here. And once again, I'm going to add a well count. And we can see that all this late time production is only driven by one well. So I, I'm going to largely ignore that and focus on the, uh, on the earlier uh, part of the production history and making sure that I have a good match there. Okay. Um, once again, you can zoom on this by selecting the data range uh, in your map. So this is how I would set the decline on this well. And now we can do the same for gas. Once again, to do this, we just say add fluid, select add. And uh, once again, I'm going to put these on a log scale. I'm going to stagger the fluids here so they're a little bit offset. And then we can uh, drag and drop as needed. So now we're getting a good trend. We're, we're fitting both the uh, early time and the uh, late time data in this well. And if we want to zoom all the way out, now we can see, see our full decline here. Okay, so now we've created these two type curves. And we are ready to start interpreting, which we will uh, do in the next video.